Okay, what we have here is a Chrysler NVLD solenoid assembly, venting assembly. And what I did is I basically I just took the top off of it. Here we have the the three wire or the three wire plug goes in. One is a common ground for both the switch and the solenoid. The other is a wire that powers up the solenoid, and the other is a sense wire that the PCM supplies either 12 or 5 volts to. And when the switch in the top part here closes, that 5 volts will drop to zero, and the PCM will read that as zero as zero volts, and will sense then that the switch has closed. Okay, and just a little explanation here of how this works. This here, we have two ports on here. This port here goes to the goes to the vent is the vent port and goes up to the filter to keep dirt out. So the air would normally during purge cycle would enter through there. And then our other vent our other port here goes to the canister, which the air flows through here into the canister. So during purge, fresh air can enter the canister as the air in the canister gets purged into the into the engine. Okay, and then just a brief explanation here of the solenoid assemblies. Normally, when this, as this, as the NVLD sits, the system is closed to the atmosphere. So, what happens when the, after you shut your car off, the uh, fuel in the tank supposedly will cool, and as it cools, it contracts, and that contraction will draw this diaphragm here, and underneath this dry diaphragm, there is a micro switch and as that as the vacuum in the tank increases this uh, diaphragm here will push on the switch and that closes the contacts in there and that will drop the voltage to zero so the PCM can read zero voltage that the switch has closed. Okay and then the other part is the is the solenoid assembly and what the solenoid assembly does when the solenoid is not generated the relief valve here is closed so that there is vacuum in the in the system when the solenoid is activated that pushes the plunger down and that allows the air to move through here and the purpose for that is to uh, is for a check system because once you start your vehicle up you there will be vacuum in the tank you often notice this when you take your gas cap off you can hear a sucking you'll hear a sucking sound or a purge sound, one or, one or the other. So when you start your car, the PCM will open the solenoid, which will release the vacuum, and then it knows from there, because the vacuum is released, this micro switch will switch to the off position in the diaphragm as the pressure from behind there is released. Okay, and I always thought that there was a relationship between the switch and when you activate the solenoid, but there really is no relationship. When you do the solenoid test, from your scanner, there's no relationship between the, that functional test of the solenoid and of the and of the switch and top part here. The, the way that the air is routed, the vacuum is routed. It come the vacuum is supplied to the intake port here, which goes to the canister vent. And what it does right here through the electrical where the electrical connection is, where the two prongs from the top part seat into there. Vacuum goes through there and then gets up in behind the diaphragm and that's what pulls your diaphragm in to control the switch. It's not the pressure from in here that pushes the diaphragm up or the movement of the solenoid that pushes the diaphragm up. It's the vacuum that gets underneath the lid, underneath the diaphragm, that actually pulls it up and closes it. And in the same way, once you get, pr if you have pressure in your tank, just the opposite will happen. Normally, this is closed, so pressure in here would be pushing up on the relief valve, which would then pressurize your tank. Well, you don't want too much pressure in your tank, and you don't want to blow the gas cap off, obviously. So what happens is that pressure also goes up through the where the electrical connections is, and because this here is a larger surface area than this here, even though you have equal pressure on both sides, the larger surface area will push down and this here will then act as a relief valve to relieve the pressure in the tank. And you just, and because this here is hooked up to the canister, the pressure in the tank, the air that's in the tank is being filtered through the canister so that the air that exits the 
on the vent side here is actually filtered air and should not have that many hyd hydrocarbons in it. And that should all have been captured in the canister. So hopefully this will help explain here a little bit of how this works. The large leak test is a little different. The large leak, leak test, the PCM just activates the purge solenoid and then watches for the uh, watches for a vacuum increase and then sees how long that vacuum will last until the diaphragm is released. So it's just a bleed off, a matter of how much time it takes to bleed off to to allow the to allow the uh, the diaphragm to be released here. So that's about it for this video, I guess. Uh, really, not much else you can say about this. Once you get it apart and you take a look at it, it seems fairly simple, but. For as simple as they are, they seem to have a lot of problems and replacement rate is pretty high. The two major failures, is, of course, are leaks in the diaphragm or the, just that little micro switch, the contacts in there go bad after a while, or you just you get corrosion in here. And anywhere where you have an electrical problem, you'll get like a 441 code or something like that. So, okay, that's about it.